Okay, guys, lesson 35 is where we're at today, and we are looking at more integrals. So realize when I say integrals, we are talking about the antiderivatives again. Okay, so just kind of be aware. There's things I love about the Saxon book. There's things I don't love so much about the Saxon book, and it just kind of depends. Um, I do like that they mix up derivatives and integrals as we go through the book, but there's also there's pros and cons to that. It's helpful, but yet it can also get a little tedious remembering which to do. So, um, as we look at example A here, we're talking about looking at just some specific, we learned integrals. We just did some integrals of things you already knew, like sine, cosine, e to the x, some of those, didn't we? So we haven't gotten into any integral rules really or anything, but that's what, kind of some of what we're looking at today. Um, start with derivative. If f of x equals 5x, what is the derivative of f of x? In other words, what is f prime of x? Be what? Five. Okay, so this is a derivative, right? Kind of leading you in here. But this goes back to the rule of subtract one for the x. Subtract one from the exponent and multiply it out front, which this just becomes five. Your x drops off. So if the derivative of five x is five, what is the integral of five dx? 5x plus c. The idea here that if you have just a constant, no variable, so just the constant of 5, when we do the integral or antiderivative, you basically add an x on, so it's 5x. And as with any integral you ever give, 5x plus c. Okay, so that's the rule we're looking at there. So the idea, what this is saying is the integral of any constant is going to be k times x plus c. I would like to think that's kind of self-explanatory also at this point, just based on what we know about derivatives and antiderivatives. So, questions there? Okay, example B. What if we have a constant times a function then? Okay, what happens there? So, some still some more practicing. What's the derivative of f of x if f of x is 5 sine x? So what is f prime of x here? Okay, 5 cosine x. The constant of 5 just carries down. And then the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So 5 cosine x. If that's the case, then what is the integral of 5 cosine x dx? Five sine x plus c. Again, that five, that constant of five, it just carries along. So basically, just write the five down, and I'll show you another option here in a moment of how you could write it. The integral of cosine x is sine x. And as always, don't forget the plus c. Remember, you can always check yourself. What's the derivative of 5 sine x? And that is 5 cosine x. The way they write the rule on this one, and I'll demonstrate this, the integral of k f of x dx, what you will see them say is, okay, it is the k. The k can be pulled out front of the integral because the k is just a constant. It doesn't have to stay in the integral. And so it can be written as a constant times the integral of f of x dx. And I will do a little bit of that here. Just, it's good to understand the notation. Not that it really changes what you're doing, but it's helpful to understand the notation. So, for instance, when I ask you here, what's the integral of 4 cosine t dt? Not saying you have to, but one way to think about that, that 4 is a constant. So where can that 4 be pulled? 
it can be pulled out front. And so then the question really becomes, what is 4 times the integral of cosine t dt? So just kind of taking the 4 out of, you know, view for a moment. So the 4 carries down. What's the integral of cosine? Sine t, right? The integral of cosine t is sine t. So this answer is going to be 4 sine t plus c. Check yourself if you're still working out those sines and cosines. And just remember the derivative of sine is cosine. So working backwards, it checks itself. What about um, example 35.2 here? The integral of sine u du. He's suggesting negative cosine u plus c. Do you like it or not like it? You guys are all quiet for a Monday. And he used u because the original problem was in terms of u, right? Just like earlier we used t because the original problem was in terms of t. Can you check yourself there? In order to check myself, I can say, okay, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So the derivative of negative cosine has to be positive sine. Try to decide. I guess one thing, and I don't know, maybe you guys aren't struggling with it out there. As I said, you guys are all quiet today. I don't know what you're struggling with or not struggling with. But here's my suggestion. It doesn't hurt as you're going through homework or whatever whoops, to write down your pieces, right? If we know, you can't see what I'm writing down though. Okay. If we know cosine, remember the derivative of cosine is negative sine. If I start with sine x, the derivative of sine x is cosine x, right? So that's my, you know, if you get in the middle of a problem and you're confused, that's what I always do. Is I go and I start thinking about those and then I work backwards. So here if I'm going from cosine to sine, sorry, cosine to sine, okay? Here negative sine to cosine. Oh my gosh, I keep negative sine to cosine since it's a positive sine. We use the negative. I'm not helping matters today by confusing my signs. My positive and negative signs, that is. Okay, I'm moving on. Example C. This is a good one. Okay, this is the integral of x to the n. So this is, if you have a power, we know how to take the derivative, but how do you reverse that and take the antiderivative or the integral? So, start with an example again. What's the derivative of x to the fourth? So what's our rule there? Okay. Bring that exponent out front and multiply by it and subtract one from the exponent. So this becomes 4x to the third. Now, okay, well, fairly obvious. If the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x to the third, what's the integral of 4x to the third? <laughs> Bless you. What's the integral of 4x to the third? x to the fourth. Plus c. Hey now, Nathan's probably answered more than anybody else. Okay, now. That was kind of obvious because they had us, you know, work the opposite problem right in front of it. But let's look at this rule and how they help you think of it. Okay, so if you're doing the integral of some power, 
It's x to the n plus 1. So now since we had subtracted a 1 from the power, we have to add a 1 to the power. And then I like to think of it as you're dividing by that new power. So you're dividing by n plus 1. So if we look at this problem here, 4x to the third, okay? And if we use this idea of the integral of x to the n, well, in that case, I'm going to try and work using this over here. My power is 3. So that means my n value is 3, so to speak. So in this formula, when I say x to the n plus 1, well, my function is actually 4 to the x to the third, right? So 4x to the 3, and then what do I do to that 3? Add 1. Now, that new power is 3 plus 1, so what do I also have to divide by? That 3 plus 1. So if that helps, that's what we're thinking of. Add 1 to the power, and then divide by that new power as well. That's what you'll usually hear me say. And this works out, doesn't it? 4x to the fourth divided by 3 plus 1 is 4. And the 4s will cancel. The plus C needs to, or for over here, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. I'll do it. I was just kind of going more with showing my work on the other part. But I'll put the plus C on there. Valid point. As I said, once you get into this, you won't need to write any of this out. You may not already. It's just a matter of getting that routine in. And how do I check these answers? And doing it backwards means we're going to be taking the derivative, right? So you can always check yourself by turning around taking the derivative. So I'm just going to write that in. Check by taking the derivative. Okay. I'm ready for example three whenever you guys are. The integral of 5s to the negative 20th ds. If we use this rule, what are we doing here? Dividing it by what? Negative 19. Okay. Dividing, he says dividing it all by negative 19 because what will my new power be? Negative 19. So if I say it's 5s currently to the negative 20th, what do I have to do to that negative 20? You add 1. And so that means you're dividing by that negative 20 plus 1. Now, in all reality, are you guys going to write negative 20 plus 1 on your paper? No way. You guys are looking at me like I'm crazy, but that's all right. And so it becomes 5s to the negative 19 divided by negative 19. Okay. When I write my final answer here, I would be likely to put that 5 and 19 out front and say negative 5 19 s to the negative 19th is what I would be likely to do. Not saying the other is wrong by any means, but that's just how I'd be likely to write it. There we go. I was waiting for someone to say it. Did you see all my lovely gaps? Yeah. Plus c, plus c, plus c. I I was going to put it every time, but regardless, I was waiting for someone to tell me plus C. Okay. Um, the back side of the page is just three examples to practice the rule we just used. Are you ready for them? Example four, the integral of one-third q 
cube root of t squared dt. What do we need to do to start this problem? Yeah, rewrite this as t to the two-thirds. Definitely. So before I start this problem, and if you want to, you can move that one-third out front of the integral. But it's one-third t to the two-thirds. Just remember, your power goes on top. That index, so whatever root it is, goes in the denominator. Okay, so we're throwing in fractions right off the bat here. The whole numbers were too easy for you guys, or the integers were too easy for you guys. Okay, tell me what I'm going to do. Okay, so we have one-third T to the, and as Nathan said, he said we're adding one to two-thirds. What is two-thirds plus one? Five-thirds, it's one and two-thirds if you want, but when we make that improper, it is five-thirds. So that means my new exponent here is five-thirds. And so what did he say we're also going to do? Yeah. He said divide the one-third by five-thirds. I'm dividing the whole thing by five-thirds, same idea. What do I write in here before I move on? Plus C. Now, dividing by five-thirds is the same as what? Multiplying by the reciprocal. So, dividing by five-thirds is multiplying by three-fifths. So, this is really three-fifths times one-third t to the five-thirds plus C. Clean that up, though, because I'm not going to leave it as three-fifths times one-third, although it's technically correct because it's equivalent. What does this reduce to? One-fifth t to the five-thirds plus C. Okay, so that was an example with fractions. Are we okay with that? It's not pretty, but, you know, it's not about being pretty here. Okay, example five. The integral of 3 du over the square root of u. What are your thoughts here? Okay, we can't really do the integral of the square root of u in the denominator. We can't do the integral of a square root, more or less than the denominator. So a square root, this would be u to the one half. To get it out of the denominator, it becomes u to the negative one half. So three u negative one half du. So that's the problem we're really working on here. The integral of three u to negative one half du. Okay, what are you thinking here? Okay, 3u to the 1 half divided by 1 half. So 3u, when you add 1, negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half, divided by 1 half. Did you say it? I forget. I can't remember if the plus C was said or not. It's, it's what? It's written. Oh, it's written. So, that's the so at least you've got it. Whether I have it or not, it's different. Okay. Dividing by one half is doing what? Multiplying by two over one and makes this what? Six U to the one half plus C. 
If you needed to for some reason, you could say 6 square root of u plus c. But in all honesty, once we have it in this form, I'm going to leave it in this form most of the time. Okay, one more example for the day. Integral of 5z to the pi dz. Can you guys read that that's a pi? Okay, what are your thoughts? Okay, so we add one to the power. So it's five to the z, or five z to the pi plus one. And then we're dividing by the new power, which is pi plus one. And then plus c. Can we clean that up? Yeah, not really. Pi plus 1 is pi plus 1. About the only thing I could do, depending on the situation, is I could pull all constants out front and make them a fraction. Kind of like, you know, on the top one, it's 1 fifth times it. On the front side, I said negative 5 nineteenths out front. So if I pull all constants out front, 5 is a constant, right? And my denominator of pi plus 1 is a constant. So I could, if I needed to or wanted to, write this as 5 over pi plus 1. That's all my constants. And then it's times z to the pi plus 1 plus c. So that might be a little bit more how you would expect to see it. Whoops. In any um, assignments or anything? Not saying the top one's incorrect, though. Okay, you got that rule? Questions? Okay.